In this video, we're gonna be running through some new product updates for Zoho Books that are rolling out for June, 2025. Some of these have probably hit your account already. Some of them are soon to come. So excited to see all of these rolling out. We're gonna have a few around workflows, some around the Avalara integration and some other tax related items, and then a big one around lookup fields. So make sure to stay tuned and check out each of those and how it might affect your usage of Zoho Books. Before I jump in, I do wanna ask, make sure to like and subscribe down below if you enjoy the video leave me a comment with which one of these you're most excited to see and get your hands on and head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help on your zoho install so without any further ado let's jump right on into the walkthrough all right so here we are inside of the june 2025 release notes here first off is kind of a big one here for workflow rules so they now have what are called change comparators inside of workflow rules so what does this mean? What this means is that you can now look at specific fields and updates to those fields that identify the value that it was and the value that it now is as a part of your workflow process. So that's a lot of words to essentially mean you can now trigger a workflow in a scenario like, hey, I have a sales order. The status is confirmed. I want to trigger a workflow if that status ever moves from confirmed to something else, right? So that can essentially be used to know, hey, something's moving backwards in a process. Maybe an estimate goes from accepted to declined, right? Maybe they send you an email, go, hey, we can't move forward on this. You might wanna send out an email notification to make sure that you don't start the work or maybe submit a purchase order for those items, giving you just a lot more granularity into the types of changes that you're looking for to trigger workflow automations. I will highlight with a lot of these, the idea of like changes to a value. So like if an estimate changes to accepted, you could already do most of that with the previously existing workflow rule options. You'd really just be looking at a creator edit workflow and you have a criteria where status equals accepted. Main difference here is one, you're making the trigger more specific, which is always good. And two, you now have that ability to say that it changed from. That's really like the net new item here that I think is most important. Just again, for those scenarios where you have certain statuses where you don't expect things to change at that point, like an estimate being accepted. And if it is to change, you very likely need to know about that. Next one up, HSBC online payments for vendor payments. So inside of Zoho Books, you've got bills. With those bills, you can pay your vendors. Currently or previously, the only option supported was payment through Forte, and now HSBC is going to be supported as well. I would love to see them just roll the Plaid integration into this. Really, the more possible payment methods, the better. I mean, if you look at the customer payment side, you've got a ton of options, right? Stripe, PayPal, Authorize.net, Square, Zoho Payments. I mean, tons and tons of options on how you can receive money. Sending money, just a little bit more limited. Again, I would love to see more and more, but I'll take what I can get. So for those using HSBC, now you can just do this from directly in books. Go into a bill, click pay, pay it out. You do need to have the Zoho bill pay add-on enabled, but good news for those using HSBC. Next one up, just a minor one for email templates. You can now upload images from your desktop directly to an email template. And really the idea here would be you might have a couple different templates for like an estimate based on the type of estimate and you wanna have a little graphic image in them. You can just drop that right in now. Bit of a pro tip, make sure not to add too many images or really large file size images as that can affect email deliverability. And as pretty as that image might be, it's not worth your estimate email going to spam. <laughs> so just be sensitive to that and make sure that you don't overload any of your templates with large email files. Next one up here, line item discounts with the Avalara integration. This is good timing. Uh, we actually just did a full webinar walkthrough on Avalara and Zoho Books. Avalara, if you don't know, is just a online platform that makes calculating sales tax extremely easy. So for those who sell physical products into, you know, let's say all 50 states, all the zip codes within, maybe you're doing e-commerce, you'll know that calculating your sales tax is extremely complicated because it might be different by state, city, county, zip code, regional area. There's a lot of nitty gritty that goes into it. So plenty of customers end up using Avalara, basically just an easy fix for that. Turn it on, identify what types of items you're selling based on tax codes, and then go, cool, I'm done. My sales tax is essentially done for me. From there, 
One of the downsides with Avalara has always been once you have it enabled, you can't put a discount on a line item itself. Instead, you'd basically have to put your discount down in this like subtotal section. The problem is that that's a little less clear for clients, right? You might tell them, hey, we have an estimate or an invoice for item A, B, and C. Um, I'm able to give you this 10% discount on item A, but B and C, I simply just can't discount. Previously, again, you'd have to just put it as a discount down in that subtotal, which just, you're going to get to the same number, right? It's never been the end of the world. But for a lot of people, they really prefer discounting at a line item level because one, as a salesperson, it's a lot clearer. And two, as a client, it's a lot clearer. So this will now allow you to do it and your sales tax will still be calculated correctly based on that discounted amount. Going to show on your invoice templates just like this. Pretty nice little update there for those using Avalara. Next one is a pretty specific one for those who work closely with vendors. So what this essentially is, is you've now got a credit applied on date for a bill. And what this means is if you do have a vendor credit, this could be like something delivered and it was broken. So they, they say, hey, all right, you got a thousand bucks on file with us. You could log that as a vendor credit. And then in the future, when you apply a bill for that vendor, you could just apply the credit to it and say, hey, there's a bill for $10,000, but you owe me 1,000. So I'm gonna send you 9,000. What this is here is essentially a date that's gonna allow you to record those in the future so they don't all have to be past dated. Again, minor update there, but for those who do a lot of vendor crediting, this gives a bit more flexibility that they're probably gonna enjoy. Minor one here for Mexico, you now have the ability to create local taxes outside of just the federal tax authority. I don't know a ton about sales tax within Mexico, but I do know in the US there are tons based on state and municipal authorities. So I would have to imagine for those in Mexico, they've probably really needed this for a while. So congratulations, here it is. Next one for India edition, excluding optional fields when pushing an e-invoice. So this essentially, you have to push your invoices to the invoice registration portal. This is just a way that certain transactions are tracked in India. What used to happen is any of your custom fields that were included were going to go on that invoice when it was sent in, even if they weren't relevant for the requirements of that platform. I would have to imagine for Indian customers, this would create some friction, right? You generally like if I'm thinking about sending information to the IRS, I don't want to flood them with stuff they don't need, right? It's likely they're going to call me and go, what's all this? Right. So just being able to exclude those and say, hey, here's the stuff you need to see the rest of it. I'm not going to put it on the template because it's not relevant. Next one here, dynamic lookup fields. This is really cool. So this came out for CRM a little while back. What this is, is you have a module. Let's say you have a custom module and you're going to set up a lookup field from that custom module to an invoice. Now, let's say in that custom module, you also have a field that's linking to a customer record. What this means is I can set up my invoice lookup to only show invoices that are linked to the same customer that I've already chosen in a different lookup field. Now I'm using customer name as the example here because I think that's where this is gonna get used most often. But do keep in mind, this can be done based on any field values. This could be like a type field, right? That you only wanna see certain types of products when you have a certain type of custom module entry. You can add these to standard modules as well. I'm kind of using custom modules because that's how I would see this apply most often, right? Like if I think about an invoice and a sales order, like they are already linked, right? Through the conversion process. What this allows you to do is just make sure that like when I pull up that lookup field, I'm not seeing every single invoice in the history of invoices and I have to find the right one. I'm just seeing maybe the three or four that's associated to the customer that matches my original record. Next one's up here, just some other minor features, though I will say this one's actually really nice. I think this, uh, Zoho, if you're listening, this probably should have been its whole own little block here. So when you're looking at certain types of reports around receivables and payables, these are like your invoices and your bills, you now have the option just to display totals within a group while hiding the individual transactions within it. What does that mean? Basically, it can work like a pivot table now. Right. So I might have different types of receivables, group by customer, group by date period, group by product. And historically, again, I've had to see all of them. Now, if you're a lower volume company, it's probably not that big of a deal. Right. You're looking at last month, last three months, you've got 100 invoices. 
it's all good, right? You can kind of scroll and just easily see those, you know, summary sections. If you're a very high volume company, you probably know that these reports are not very useful for you because there could be 500 rows between each of the group totals. And so actually looking at it is just kind of useless. When a lot of our clients need this, we just pull all the data into Zoho Analytics, give them a pivot table there, and then you can collapse and expand it as needed. I don't think that I'm going to stop doing that. Analytics is always going to have a bunch more functionality and features for reporting. But for that kind of quick view into receivables and payables, this makes life a whole lot better. Next one up and the final one here for this update is just some new languages for Zoho Books. They're doing this a lot. I've seen them add tons of languages really across the Zoho ecosystem. I think translation in the era of AI is getting easier and easier. So I expect to see more of this over time. Last up here, I do just want to highlight in this article, we'll link it in the description below, they do have this little what's new section that I've been peeking at every now and then. It doesn't always stay up to date. As you see here, they're all the way back in April. And obviously these are June updates here, but this does get updated relatively often and does give you a bit of insight into what's going on. Each of these then with links into the more specific help articles for those features and functionalities. So this is generally reserved for those like larger updates. Like you might not see every single one of these come in, but I'd imagine things like change comparators and your uh, new lookup dynamic lookup fields are very likely going to get a post here eventually that will link out to these more fully written out support articles. So if you are a Zoho Books heavy user, bookmark this page here. It generally is very useful just to keep an eye on everything going on in the world of Zoho Books. So with that, I think we've wrapped up here for today. As always, I love bringing this news to you guys. Love to hear from me down in the comments on which ones of these articles are gonna be most valuable for you. Make sure to leave that down there below that like button. And while you're there, hit the like button because if you made it to this part of the video, I'm assuming there was something in here that you were liking. With that, I think we'll wrap up here for today. As always, my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.